So chat, between streams, I've done a little bit of, uh, of work, both on the base and, uh, and outside the base here. A couple of things. One, I have basically just widened the bottom floor of, uh, of this building here using the same like design language, just kind of pushed everything out a little bit. Um, it was basically just more end stone and more purple pillars here. And I've also done a little bit of, of work over on the Batania section, mostly getting ready for uh, the switch away from charcoal to just using fuels from the bonsai pots. Because as I've mentioned in a couple of the last two streams, the coke, the coke oven whilst working is too slow and having to add like a new coke oven every time we want to add more endo flames is not really a sustainable, scalable solution to our mana problem. And so I think the best option for us is going to be to basically just pump all of the sticks and all of the wormwood logs directly over to the, uh, the endo flames here uh, to allow them to you know produce mana uh, faster because at that point we could just add more uh, bonsai pots whenever we need more fuel as opposed to having to make more coke ovens every single time but uh, yeah basically i've added uh, yet more endo flames i have uh, duplicated the dropper setup with the open crate the hopper and uh, the uh, the redstone i have added a few more mana pools my plan is to put a mana splitter in the middle here and have all of our mana uh, fired over to the mana splitter which should in theory uh, split that mana between all four of the mana pools thus giving us uh, you know just more capacity in general and then, uh, of course, one of the things that I do definitely want to get done in today's stream chat is automating cobblestone with integrated dynamics. It's something that I've been talking about for like the last three streams, and I keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Today, we're finally going to do that. We're finally going to automate some cobblestone. But I think, chat, the first thing that I'm going to do today is probably upgrade a few of these chests, because as you can see, the, uh, the organizational factor is... You know, has kind of gone out the window a little bit. I have tried to keep, you know, blocks over here and, uh, and farming items over here somewhat. And then, like, you know, general purpose resources uh, like iron, redstone, you know, ingots, enderpearls over in this chest. However, we are very quickly running out of space. Uh, thankfully, chat, we do have the iron chest mod installed. And so what we can do is we can uh, fairly easily upgrade these chests to iron chests to gold chests to a diamond chest if we really want to i don't think we need to go that far just yet mostly because we don't have that much gold um, or that many uh, diamonds but i think we can at least begin by upgrading a couple of these chests to, uh, to iron chests which is unfortunately going to get rid of that uh, lovely pink color that we've become accustomed to but it should give us uh, quite a bit more space now i don't know if you can put these next to each other and form like a double iron chest i don't think that you can however i will make two just to uh to test it here so by default the iron chest has i think exactly the same amount of space as a double chest but the upside being of course that it does it um in one block space instead of two and no you can't have two of these connected to make an even bigger chest but um, it does mean that you can fit you know four normal chests worth of space in the uh, the space of two uh, iron chests here which is pretty nice the only downside of course um, is the fact that uh, we kind of don't have that much like we have to move all this stuff over which actually shouldn't be uh too too bad so somebody in the twitch chat has pointed out quite handily that uh, what you can do is uh, i believe if you craft one plank with eight uh, iron ingots like this you get a, uh, a wood to iron chest upgrade at which point um, instead of having to empty your chest out to upgrade it uh, all you have to do is right click on a pre-existing chest with the upgrade and it will transform that chest from a regular chest into a uh, an iron chest which is very useful and it does save us a little bit of time having to move all of our items uh, into new chests so uh, if we just do something like that that gives us a lot more space which uh, is going to be very useful going forward here and so i think with that taken care of chat the first thing i want to work on is i want to work on getting my mana system back online so i think the way i'm going to do this is using storage drawers up until now of course we've been storing all of our uh, you know sticks leaves saplings apples logs etc in this double chest here with all of the uh you know the bonsai pots but as you can see, the chest is now full. And uh, even if we do start pulling all the sticks out and all of the wormwood logs out to use as fuel, eventually this system is going to get backed up with leaves and with apples and it's going to stop working. And so I think one of the things we want to do here is we want to upgrade to storage drawers, which allow us to hold a large number of, of individual items. And if we want, we can even upgrade them to uh, delete any excess items if we get to just like a crazy number of, of apples and, uh, and of leaves. So... By default, the way that you make storage drawers is a little something. And I actually don't know if you can make them out of wormwood planks. You cannot, which makes sense <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, let me think here, chat, at storage drawers. Um, normally, you would do something like this with uh, a chest and then some planks. However, I think in the interest of 
making some more interesting draws. What I would like to do, Chad, is I'd like to make a, a framing table here, which is made with uh, some trim. Thankfully, you can make wormwood trim. You can make it with five planks and four sticks, which seems very doable. But yeah, so if we do something like this, that gets us the framing table. And with this, what we can do, chat, is we can go ahead and craft up these framed drawers, which again require more sticks and more planks, but are really not too difficult. And this basically allows us to make custom storage drawers using uh, the texture of whatever blocks we like. So um, let's go ahead and throw this down, I guess for now, like right here. We might move that in the future because it's not really uh, centered on the room there. But in here, what we can do is we can put in our storage drawer. And then in these three slots here, we can pick pre-existing blocks that we have and basically give the storage drawer the texture of those blocks. So for example, if I were to grab, let's say some end stone, I will grab like some cobblestone just to show it off. Uh, it's probably not gonna look great, but if we did, you know, maybe end stone, uh, wormwood logs, and let's say wormwood planks, maybe, you can see we have a storage drawer that uh, embodies all three textures. So one texture decides what the uh, kind of front inside of the storage drawer look, look, looks like. The other uh, defines what the outer faces of the storage drawer are going to look like. And the third texture uh, tells you what the kind of like outer trim or the outer edge looks like. Uh, this one, of course, is um, a little horrific. <laughs> it looks kind of terrible. Uh, you don't have to have all of them. So you can see here that uh, if we don't put one in this bottom left slot, then uh, the front is just the same color as the rest of the sides. Now, I think what we might do potentially It's like maybe something like this. We could also maybe use some like uh, of these purple blocks if we have a few left over. Yeah, we got a few in uh, in here and I believe we can if we want uh, chisel these, although I don't really think that's gonna make a huge difference uh, to the way this looks. Because I'm also thinking chat, what I might do is I'm thinking I'm probably gonna move uh, these ladders here. I put the ladders down because I got rid of the, uh, the staircase that was there previously. But um, I'm thinking what I might do is kind of move a few of these furnaces. Yeah, basically, I'm thinking of having the storage drawers on this back wall here. And what I'll probably do is move these uh, these ladders to, like, either side of the storage drawers. So if we have... Yeah, I think if we have the storage drawers kind of in the middle here, I don't think we're going to have a ton just yet. Um, but right now, it's basically just for the uh, the tree farm items that we get, and probably, uh, probably also for the cobblestone uh, that we're going to get as well today. But uh, if we do something... Like this and like this, really just for the sake of symmetry. Uh, we then have, you know, quite a few blocks of space here uh, to build in our uh, our storage drawers. Now, if somebody has recommended uh, endstone bricks, which we could also give a go. Let's have a look here. How do these look? Do these look better? I think they might look better. We could also chisel these as well, of course. Um, a chisel, fairly easy to make. It's one iron and one stick. And at that point, we can uh, change the texture of basically all of these blocks. Uh, the one that we're currently using here is wide bricks. It tells you in the, uh, the top left-hand side there. We could go with something kind of smoother with like the panels here. You know, maybe like a flat end stone. I kind of dig that, honestly. The panel end stone and then the uh, the purple edges. Let's have a look and see how this uh, how this goes. I don't know if you can recolor these. You totally can. Okay, cool. So if we don't like it, we can always redo it. But um, essentially, I'm thinking that we're just going to have these kind of in the wall like so. And these are going to hold all of our wares. And um, we could do the bricks on the side which might look better just on the like on the back side of this because the back side of this is uh, end stone. Right like over here there is uh you know it might look a bit more normal if it looks like the pre-existing end stone. So you know what sure. Let's go ahead and pick this up as well. Okay, so I like this here. We've got uh, the end stone panel on the front, nice and smooth. It makes it a lot easier to see what items you have in there. We have the wide end stone bricks on all of the back sides and then we have the purple block as uh, as the front. Nice. All right, and I think we will fill up the top bit, you know, and add eight more uh, as time goes on. For now, though, I think that is perfectly fine and should allow us, chat, to begin our, uh, our automation plan with the bonsai pots. So the idea here is I'm going to grab my transfer nodes, which I believe are hiding out over here. They are indeed. Uh, we don't need the fluid one. We just need some transfer pipe and the transfer nodes, um, but we don't need the filter anymore, which is, uh, which is quite nice. And basically, chat, all we're going to do is we're going to pump out of this chest here and into our storage drawers. Now, the easiest way for us to do that is going to be with a controller. So let's see if we don't have 
Uh, two more of those silicon ingots. If we don't, we can always sag mill some more clay. And there we go. Nice. All right. So the idea here with the draw controller is that uh, we can pump all of our wares from the bonsai pots into the draw controller, which for now, I'm going to put right about here. It's not going to look fantastic and it's not going to be too accessible. We can maybe move it in the future. But uh, essentially, just as kind of a proof of concept, we're going to have all of the items from this uh, this chest here pumped around and into the draw controller. And what that's going to do is that's going to take all of these items, slowly but surely, and put them into, uh, into certain drawers. Now, we do want to make sure that uh, each item only goes into one drawer, but I think it should do that by default anyway. And I think I also want to make sure that the apples are on the higher level here because I'm fairly certain that we're going to pull out of these two drawers to pipe items around over to these two, uh, two chests here, right? So that should work. Again, it might be a little slow. Uh, we could make some speed or, uh, or stack upgrades later on down the line. I don't think we really quite have what it takes to make those just yet, but slowly but surely, all that stuff should get pulled out. And then, like I said, I think what we're going to do is we're going to pull out of these bottom two, which is going to actually mean that we should move the controller, which is fine. We can uh, shimmy this over by one. Like that. And then we're going to pull out of these two. Now, I do believe, obviously, if we do this, that's just going to pull items out and pump them back in uh, to the controller, which is less than ideal. But I believe what we can do, Chan, is if we make the wrench from extra utilities two, that being this guy right here, we can uh, disconnect that pipe and stop it from connecting to the uh, the draw controller there, thus preventing it from uh, cycling the items back around. And instead, you know, send all of the items over uh, to the uh, the droppers. So uh, for that, we do need three iron, one redstone, and then one red dye. Thankfully, red dye can be substituted for floral red powder. And so all we need for that is our pestle and mortar. Boom, and boom, that gets us the floral red dye. Redstone, of course, we have, and iron ingots we also have. So that is pretty much a wrench taken care of. I'm also fairly certain that we do have poppies. We do indeed. There we go. And boom. Nice. All right. So back over here. Essentially, chat, if we replace down the pipe, we can then right-click there to disconnect it. And I think all I'm going to do is kind of run that underground all the way along and over maybe to here. And I think what we'll do is we'll have the pipe kind of come up like this between the uh, the end of flames and connect up to uh, both of the these chests here. Uh, and so what should happen is we should generate logs and six in this uh, chest here. They get piped around into the storage drawers. They then get pulled out of the storage drawers and sent around over to here. Uh, the whole point of having the storage drawers is basically just a buffer uh, if we start producing more uh, wood or more sticks. Um, and it also allows us, if we want, to store all of our apples and all of our wormwood leaves, meaning that the system can keep going for much, much longer before it starts to back up. And then if we wanted to, we could even take it one step further and put in some void upgrades, which I'm going to hold off on doing now because we don't have that much obsidian. But uh, later on down the line, once we have uh, easier access to obsidian, we can make a few of these and, and have our drawers here destroy excess items. So by default, they hold up to 2,048 of any given item. We can set it up in such a way that uh, once we get more than 2,048 apples, the storage drawers will just delete extra apples so that our system doesn't get backed up and continues to produce the, uh, the sticks and the logs required to keep our end of flames going. All right, so those are now connected up. So all of our items should get pumped right around and, uh, and over into here, which is good. And basically, I think the final thing that we want to do is probably lock these drawers. So the storage drawer mod does add a key. This guy right here, uh, which allows you to lock a drawer, basically meaning that even when you pull all of a certain item out of that drawer, um, it doesn't let another item in. So uh, basically, eventually, we might run out of wormwood logs or maybe out of sticks. What we don't want happening is all of our sticks running out and then excess apples being put into this storage drawer. Uh, we can rectify that with the old, uh, the old key here. Um, it does require two gold ingots, one gold nugget, and then one uh, upgrade template, which we can do with one trim, some sticks, and some gold. So we have the sticks. We have the trim. Boom. That's two upgrade templates. And then basically at that point, chat, we just need the gold, both of which we have, and the nugget is also good to go as well. Perfect. So boom and boom. And then all we have to do is right-click to, uh, to lock these. And you'll know it's locked with the little uh, key icon there right at the top. And there we go. So now we should have a much more reliable and hopefully much faster mana generation system. I'm hoping now that going forward, 
because we're not relying on the coke ovens, because we're not waiting uh, for all of the coke ovens to, uh, you know, process all of the wood before being used as fuel, I'm hoping we'll have enough fuel to keep all of these endo flames going. And if we don't, we can just go ahead and make some more bonsai pots, make some more chests and put down uh, more, you know, bonsai pots and more chests and hook them all up to the same storage drawer system. Uh, the final thing that we need to do here to actually get this system up and running is put down the mana splitter in the middle and connect up these two mana spreaders to that mana splitter to allow us to actually start generating and storing that mana. So the mana splitter is also thankfully fairly easy to make. It is six living rock and two mana steel. I think both of which we should have. We have the living rock and then we might have some mana steel. We do not. That is also uh, perfectly fine. We only need two and we do have enough iron for it. So let's head on over to our old mana pool. One and two, good stuff. And so basically, chat, that should be us. Good to go. There's the mana splitter. We're gonna put that down between our four mana pools, which is, I believe, the maximum number of mana pools that you can split mana between. And then using our wand, we're gonna shift right click and shift right click, shift right click and shift right click. And we should see all of these pools slowly but surely filling up with the mana from all of these endo flames here. And yeah, this should be working. Nice. So next up on my list of things to do chat is the automation of cobblestone with the pure daisy. Now, um, there are probably easier ways to do this. Uh, for example, if we were to uh, beeline towards the terrain generator and the biome generator, head on through to the nether, rebuild the nether and then get some lava, we could probably set up a standard cobblestone generator with lava and water and then use just a mechanical user in the middle uh, to break that water but where's the fun in that instead um, i would like to play around with this uh, mod over here called integrated dynamics which it should allow us to uh, to automate the production of cobblestone and therefore basically the production of any block that goes around a pure daisy um, using some of these items right here so to get into integrated dynamics uh, we need to first get a mineral sampling which we can get by throwing a wormwood sampling into a mana pool it does require by the looks of it a surprisingly large amount of, of mana, but that is completely fine. Uh, I would very much so actually like like a second entrance <laughs> to my building over on that back wall there. It would make my life a lot easier when we keep going out over to that area, but uh, nevertheless, let's see if we have enough mana to make a mineral sampling. We do indeed, fantastic. And um, of course, going forward, we do need quite a bit of, or quite a lot, I should say, of mineral chunks. And uh, it would probably be in our best interest to get a, a bonsai pot going uh, for this. But uh, for now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna temporarily get rid of this guy and uh, basically try and grow this over uh, over here and we might have to cut down and bum meal up a couple of these but i think it's gonna be worth it chat we don't have that much bum meal we don't have our watering can though. i don't know if the watering can works with saplings but i am going to try it because if it uh, if it does that's going to save us a lot of bone meal Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to uh, to work. That's fine. Boom. All right, so that's a, uh, a mineral tree. And I'm fairly certain that when we break these leaves here, we do have a chance of getting uh, mineral chunks as well as mineral berries here. All right. So we have 27 mineral wood, five crystallized mineral chunks, and 12 mineral berries. The mineral berries do count as a, a food source. So we can use those if we want. Um, I will plant, you know, a few of these. We'll obviously replace down the daisies um, in a minute here, but uh, for now, what we can do, um, as has been handily pointed out by the Twitch chat, is we can uh, squeeze our mineral wood, so we can run this through the old mechanical, uh, sorry, the regular squeezer that we have to make the mineral resin, and then if we have a drying base, and we can then uh, kind of solidify or dry that mineral resin into blocks of crystallized mineral chunks, which can then be crafted down into uh, yet more of those crystallized mineral chunks, which are going to be needed for basically most of what we... Uh, are going to make over here. So let's grab our squeezer. I'm going to move it temporarily out of this corner. And let's also get a drying basin. This guy requires one floor black powder, two iron, and then five logs. That seems very doable. So uh, do we have what it takes? We do indeed. Perfect. So I believe that the squeezer will automatically output to an adjacent block like this. So I think all we have to do, chat, is get ourselves a, uh, a button and or a lever i think a button would be ideal and we should already have one lying around from earlier however i have seemingly lost it that's fine and so i think all we have to do here is put in the mineral wood like so 
jump on the squeezer. That should, I think, auto-eject that into the drying basin. It does indeed. And then hopefully, slowly but surely, that's going to uh, convert that into a block of mineral chunks. Nice. All right, that is actually fairly easy, chat. All right, so that's a couple more mineral chunks there. Now, before we get too much further into integrated dynamics, I think we need to, to do a slight pivot over into uh, Extra Utilities 2 because the way that we're actually going to place and break the uh, end stone that's, that we're going to turn into cobblestone is via the use of the mechanical user. So essentially, we're going to have one mechanical user place end stone, and then we're going to have the other mechanical user uh, break that end stone when it has been turned into cobblestone via the effects of the pure Deze. So we're going to need at the very least two of these, obviously, um, in an ideal world, if we're going to make, you know, an efficient amount of, um, you know, of cobblestone, uh, we'd want to have eight per pure daisy, right? Eight places and then eight breakers so we can maximize the amount of cobblestone that we generate. Uh, but again, just as kind of a proof of concept for the time being, let's see if we can't make two mechanical users. So we need two levers, two droppers and two resonating redstone crystals, both of which, or all of which I should say, uh, really shouldn't be too bad. We already have the ender shards from a previous stream. So getting the two redstone crystals there is not going to be a problem. Cobblestone, we should also have lying around in here. We do indeed. So we'll grab two of those to make us our two levers. Perfect. And then from there, chat, all we need is endstone, right? So let's see. Do we have what it takes to make two droppers? We do indeed. And then two, hopefully, mechanical users. Nice. So one of these guys is going to go down in, I think in the floor. You could put these like, you know, here and here, uh, but I think we're gonna have our placer here and then our breaker here. So this one is going to be set to place block. There are a few options here uh, for what the squeezer should do. We're going to use place block uh, right click and upper left slot only. So what you should do is if we put in some end stone, it's going to place that end stone into the world. Okay, so the Twitch chat has uh, handily pointed out that there is a mechanical miner as well from Extra Utilities 2, which again is fairly easy. It's the exact same recipe, but instead of a lever, there is a, a pickaxe. So yeah, now the mechanical user will place down end stone and the mechanical miner right now is going to break it. We're going to change that to uh, only work when it receives a redstone signal. And that redstone signal is where integrated dynamics comes in because we're going to use a combination of the block reader and the redstone writer to basically check to see if this block here is cobblestone. If it's not cobblestone, then we're not going to send a redstone signal. As soon as it is cobblestone, then we're going to send a, a redstone signal. Now to do that, we're going to need a couple of items, most of which, um, if not all of which, I have bookmarked over on uh, the left-hand side of my inventory. So let's quickly head on back in and see if we don't have what it takes to make these. Uh, the first thing that I think we're going to need chat is probably actually most of it. So we're gonna make a block reader, a redstone writer, some logic cable, a variable card or two, a logic programmer and a variable storage. Those are the items that we need. And the reason, you know, for the, the requirement of each of those items will become apparent hopefully as, uh, as we progress forward here. So let me clear out most of my inventory and let's see if we don't have what it takes to make these. So most of them, are made with just a ton of mineral chunks, a bunch of mineral chunks, and then occasionally some iron, uh, occasionally some wood. So I think we're probably, first of all, chat, gonna wanna get maybe a few more of these blocks here. All right, let's see here, chat. So the, uh, the logic programmer is fairly simple. It's just a, a crafting table and a block of mineral, so crafting station, like so, plus uh, one block of mineral, gets us the old logic programmer. The variable storage is two blocks of mineral, plus a chest, okay. Also, very doable. There we go. It does also appear though, Chad, that we need um, a sticky piston, which means we are gonna have to get slime. We can get slime, via cactus, which actually doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, that's fine, chat, that is very fine. Yeah, okay, let's get uh, some sticks. Do we have sticks in here? We do indeed, perfect. I'll make a couple of batches of cable here. I don't know quite how many um, we're going to need, but 
I think probably more than three is the answer. So you know what? Yeah, we'll go for, for nine. All right. So we have the logic programmer, the variable storage, and some logic cable. We still need the redstone writer, the block reader, and the variable card. The variable card is very easy for us to make. It does require some sugar cane, which thankfully we have. So paper and boom. You do also get 24 of these variable cards at once, which is very nice. We're only going to use a few of these today, but we might use more uh, in the future. Then in terms of the redstone writer, we need an output variable transformer, which um, I think sounds probably more complicated than uh, they needs to be, but that is fine. Let's grab some cobblestone. Let's also grab, ideally, some more logs here for some planks. That should allow us to make um, at least two pistons because the block reader does also require a piston. So I'll make two of those. At that point, we should then, I think, have pretty much everything uh, that we need in order to make the redstone writer, which is basically a block that is able to uh, emit a redstone signal. In our case, we're, of course, going to use that um, on the uh, mechanical miner. There we go. So that is that taken care of. We also have the variable cards and we have the manual samplings. So the final item is the block reader. The block reader does require an inverted variable transformer. Oh no, it requires an input variable transformer uh, as opposed to the output variable transformer. That requires a sticky piston, which uh, we currently don't have. However, we can make slime balls using cactus and we can make cactus using the Hawthorn, which uh, grows over in the, the acid plains biome. And thankfully, Isaac of the past did go ahead and uh, shear some of that the last time I was there. So essentially, chat, all we should have to do is uh, drop this in over here. That gets us cactus. And then uh, this does work, thankfully, just like the sugar cane over on the snad here. So if we put that down and then uh, if we do something like that, that should, I think, basically get us... And let's stand... Let's not do that. <laughs> let's uh, get rid of this. If we put the cactus down and then stand close enough to pick the cactus up when it uh, falls, we should be able to fairly easily kind of farm some cactus here. Nice. We don't need that many. In fact, for now, we just need the one. And boom. Nice. All right. So that should be a sticky piston taken care of. And essentially, that should also be the, the block reader also taken care of. We do need four dirt. Um, I do think, chat, one of the things I would like to put uh, pretty high up on my list of things to make is the Rod of the Land. It works in a very similar way to the Rod of the Seas and the Rod of the Sky, uh, but this time it can turn mana into dirt. The reason I say that is that right now the only way for us to make dirt is by generating vivid grass, by dropping uh, Stygian grass into mana and then breaking the vivid grass. And uh, as more and more people have been joining the Patreon server, we've kind of slowly but surely been running out of that wizardry mana in uh, in the world so instead of having to go and you know travel a uh, hundred thousand blocks to get more mana um, i think it would be a wise idea to invest in a way to produce dirt uh, that just uses the regular batania mana that we have already so um we'll, we'll try and make that i think fairly soon for now though do we have everything that it takes to make the block reader we'll make the input variable transformer and then one more piece of dirt should get us the reader so now we have that chat. Essentially, what we're going to do is over by our mechanical user and our breaker, we're going to put down, for now, a piece of endstone right here. We're then going to have our block reader right up against this endstone. So this is going to read what this block is. And if we open this up here, which we can do as soon as we put down one logic cable, we can then right click on this to see what's inside of it. And you'll see that this is basically able to read a bunch of information about this block. It can read uh, if there is a block here, true or false. If we break this, it's now set to uh, false because there's no block there. Uh, it can also detect, you know, the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, uh, the biome, the light level, all kinds of stuff. We're only after, for now, which kind of block it is. Right now, it's end stone. We're also going to have a redstone writer right about here. And again, we'll connect that up with some cable, like so. These are now connected. They don't require power, which is nice. We do also, however, need a logic programmer, which I don't think has to be part of the, the network. We can put this down basically wherever we want. Uh, the variable storage does have to be part of the network, so I'll put that down for now. Let's say right here. And then we do actually have to use the logic programmer. So essentially, what we're going to do is, in here, we're going to get one of our variable cards, and we're going to put it in the block slot right there. That's going to change this into a variable card that is essentially linked to this variable. The variable being the variable being 
which block is on here. So basically, this card knows what block is here. And so what we're going to do is in here, in the logic programmer, we have to go and type in block. And the block that we're going to do is cobblestone. And we're going to get a new variable, like so. So this variable here is linked to cobblestone. And then we can go to equals. And we can go variable equals cobblestone. So basically, all we've done there is we've created a variable for cobblestone. And then let me put another one in here, like that. So we have three variable cards. We have one that is linked to what block is here. So using the reader, we have linked this variable card. So now this card knows what block is here. Over in here, we've typed in block. We've created a new variable by putting cobblestone in here and creating that variable. So this variable is just cobblestone. And then we've done essentially a little equation here. We've said if this block, which again is linked to this block over here, equals cobblestone, then output true. So this final variable card here is, uh, you'll see it says output type boolean. Boolean basically just means it can output either true or false. And so um, essentially this is going to output true if there is stone here and it's going to output false if there's no cobblestone here. So in the reader, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the redstone type boolean. We're then going to stick in our variable card like so. And you'll see right now it says variable with ID zero could not be found within the current network and variable with ID one could not be found within the network. Those are these two variables here. You'll see variable ID is one and zero. We're going to put those in the variable storage and those should now be accessible. They are indeed. So this guy is currently set to work with a redstone signal. So he will turn on when he is given a redstone signal. And I believe that uh, I am going to turn this to strong power true. So it's going to out output basically a 15 strength redstone signal um, when it receives what it's uh, when it receives a true when this becomes cobblestone. But yeah, I believe, chat, this is working. So uh, the variables need to be stored in here, these two variables here. But um, essentially, we have two variables, one linked to this block, which is reading the end stone. When that end stone becomes cobblestone, that then triggers this variable here to emit true. As soon as that emits true, this then emits a redstone signal, triggering the breaker, which then breaks the cobblestone. So this only emits true when there is cobblestone here. And so essentially, chat, we should at that point basically have an infinite cobblestone generator. Obviously, right now, it's pretty slow because we have to wait. Um, I think it's about 90 seconds between each endstone being placed and being broken by cobblestone, but it is automated. And so uh, as time goes on, we will get more and more cobblestone in this miner. And if we wanted to, it really wouldn't be too difficult for us uh, to put down. And we do want to make sure that there is endstone uh, in this uh, mechanical user, by the way. But um, it wouldn't be too difficult for us to make, you know, seven more uh, mechanical users as well as seven more uh, mechanical miners and uh, basically put all of those down, at which point we would probably switch it up. I think we'd still only use the one reader because all of the blocks should turn in to cobblestone at the same time. Um, but we would use the, uh, instead of outputting just the redstone to the one miner, we would instead output the redstone you know, to the world and then connect that up to all of the rest of the uh, of the miners. For now though, let's go and get some uh, some endstone and throw that into the bottom, uh, the bottom mechanical user just to get that going with... Um, with making cobble. Nice. Again, in the long run, this is going to be kind of awkward because we uh, we don't have, I don't think, an infinite way of making endstone. So I might end up pivoting over to uh, to using like lava and water going forward anyway. But uh, the proof of concept is there, and we might use more integrated dynamics uh, in the future. Uh, but for now, though, chat, I think I'm going to wrap up today's stream there. It's a slightly shorter stream than, than usual. Um, unfortunately, the server is getting a little laggy. I'll, I'll take a look into that and try and, and try and fix things. Um, next time, though, we will come back and we'll uh, finally get that dimensional, uh, that terrain generator and the biome generator up and running. And we'll also look at getting more power and we'll see about, uh, you know, getting into the nether, rebuilding the nether, and then hopefully getting on to the, uh, the next quest line. For now, though, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Cool,